Good morning, everyone. Only Jordan, it's an English joke. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, yeah, if everybody's got a Bible in the hand, if they could go to Matthew 27, 38 to 34, read it with me. So the title of my sermon tonight is Repentance of the Two Thieves. And I'm going to get two volunteers very shortly. And don't worry, it's not the days of the charismatic church. Remember he said, be ye not offended. Okay. And I haven't got any Kevlar body armor on, if anybody shoots me. Okay. <laughs> then there were two, <clears throat> pardon me. Then were there two thieves crucified with him. One on the right hand, another on the left. And they that passed by reviled him, wagging the heads and saying, Thou that destroys the temple and buildest it in three days, save thyself. If thou be the Son of God, come down from the cross. Likewise also the, <clears throat> the chief priest mocking him with the scribes and elders said, He saved others, himself he cannot save. If he be the king of Israel, let him come down now from the cross and we will believe him. He trusted in God, and let him deliver him now, if he will have him, for he said, I am the Son of God. The thieves also, which were crucified with him, cast the same in his teeth. Second scripture, and then we're finished. I want people to go to is to Luke 23, and we're going to go through 39 to 43. Give everybody a moment to get there. And one of the malefactors which were hanged railed on him, saying, If thou be Christ, save thyself and us. But the other answer rebuked him, Does not thou fear God, seeing thou art in the same condemnation? But the other answer him rebuked him, saying, does not thou fear God, seeing thou art in the same condemnation? The reason I'm going to say that twice is you'll get to it, or you'll understand in a moment. And we indeed justly, for we receive the due reward of our deeds, but this man hath done nothing amiss. And he said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou comest in thy kingdom. And I'm going to go very back to that one again. And he said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, Today thou shalt be with me in paradise. Okay. So now I'm going to ask for two volunteers to come up. Brother Chad, if you'd love to um, come up to this. Yeah, if you could come up. I'm also going to call up Brother Jake. If you could just stand here. Yes, sir. Don't have to do that. Okay. Yeah. Just, Come on, make just, good. just one here. Okay. Hopefully, I won't be able to see the faces when they look at this. But anyway, so repentance of the two thieves is what I said. Um, I just want people to know that when we go out as soul winners, um, I'm glad we're closing up on repentance um, because the most common thing we get is. Um, People saying, well, you know, you've got to do this, or you've got to do that, or anything else. Um, invariably, sometimes, even when we think we've been thorough, we can get something wrong. I did this the other day. I assumed somebody, um, of other countless doors that I've knocked, I got this wrong. So I just wanted to be super clear about this, that unfortunately, Brother Chad, you're going to represent the world. All right. You are thief one. Jake, you are thief too. Okay. So when we say, um, when the world says, well, you've got to do this, you've got to do that, the other things, clearly we're going to be talking about trap number one, yes? Now, if I say, <clears throat> John 3, 16, for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in should not perish, but have everlasting life, that would be this person, right? Okay, now then, the main point I want to get to is we've established it's either belief or unbelief. 
Now, I don't want to um, <clears throat> make a lot of folks mad, um, but that day Jesus was obviously on the cross as well. Okay, so there's Jesus in the middle. We have unbelief and we have belief. We don't have a fourth cross somewhere that says, well, these people did this so they can't be saved. I just want to make that absolutely clear. We have unbelief and we have belief. Okay. Now, the reason why I mentioned that is that the most common thing we come up against, just to touch on this, is that people will say, well, surely if somebody killed somebody, or surely somebody um, did such a horrible sin that, um, you know, uh, they couldn't be saved. And the world's way is that, well, according to this guy, nah, he doesn't want to know Jesus. That's the world he's already done. But this guy, or what we would call something works-based salvation, apparently this guy, here's a knife, just go down, you know, do your own thing, work your way to heaven. It doesn't work like that, because that's always going to fall back to this guy. Now then, I want to touch on something and put this in people's mind. Just looking at some facts. Um, we have some, something called secret sins. I don't know if anybody knows that in the Bible. If everybody wants to go to um, Psalm 90, verse 8. In fact, no, let's back up a second and go to Psalm 19, verse 12. I prefer this one. Give everybody a moment to get there. Okay, so it says, Who can understand his errors? Cleanse thou me from secret faults. Now then, at this point, Brother Jake, you can go and take a seat. Okay. Thank you for your cooperation today. Okay. So, I'm just going to pick on Brother Chad for a little bit. Not really, because he's a great guy. Um, but yeah, so the reason why I'm touching on this is because you know, if, let's say hypothetically, oh, I don't know, many times I bumped into a street preacher and they speak with great piety and they speak out the two sides of the mouth. They will say, and I've literally bumped into this person in Manchester in England while we're doing some filming, and he's quoting Ephesians 2, 8, 9 out of his mouth whilst telling people also to repent of their sins. So we stopped him in the middle and I say, well... If it was about working your way to heaven, what would you do about your secret sins? And he had no answer for me, right? Because if we don't even know our own secret faults, remember the Bible says even the thought of foolishness is a sin one time. Apostle Paul said you break offending one point of the law, you might as well have broke all of it. So I don't know about y'all, I've caught that southern word, but I have plenty of foolish thoughts, okay? So what I'm getting at is there's just absolutely no way, no way that somebody can be uh, work the way to heaven because you would have to have some sort of limitless pill. If anybody's ever seen that secular movie, it's basically um, somebody takes like a pill and gets a lot of knowledge. We don't have those yet. Although I hear the World Economic Forum are on the, on the, on the mend with that. Probably is how uh, Mr. Rothschild at his untimely end. Um, but yeah. Um, but just going back to Brother Chad. There's just no way Brother Chad could get down. He's bound, okay? And I want to talk just briefly on statistics. I'm not a big statistics guy. I'm kind of off the hip, kind of. Um, salesman, right? So we just say the first thing that comes to our mouth. Um, so this is an interesting stat. Uh, estimated every year, 56 million deaths. Um, at this point, I'd like to hopefully not offend anybody with COVID jokes. Um, now, that's probably gone up a bit in the last five years. Um, 
but this is this is allegedly to Google. Um, there's 56 million deaths per year. That equates to breaking that down to the incrementals are 4.6 million per month, 150,000 150, daily, 6,000 per hour, and 106 every minute. And I still think they're lying, but anyway, we'll go with that. Um, so at this point, um, you can go and sit down now, Brother Chad. Thank you for that. At this point, as I said, it was super short. And I think sometimes um, we don't get a lot of time at a door sometime to speak to people. Um, for anybody who's never gone soul winning, um, it's, it can, it, 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 you know, to me, it's, it's, it's to say the scriptures and, and to, to speak to people. You would think, oh, well, salesmanship, natural ability. Um, that's not the case. I messed it up the other day, um, and I still think about it now. Um, but I can only have give that to Christ. Um, and thankfully, I, I had a solid brother who rescued that from me. Um, so it was taken care of. Um, but yeah, I just want to... I just want to encourage people who do go soul winning um, that when we get hit with repentance, um, that we do fully go through the gospel. Um, and that we should always, always, in any doubts, um, go through the plan. Um, and it's quite simply belief versus unbelief in any doubt if anybody gives us those answers, um, what we've talked about. Um, last thing I want to do is um, quote my favourite scripture. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. Hath, present tense. If there's anybody who's hearing this, I need you to understand um, anybody in any doubt about the salvation. You need to admit you're a sinner. You must know that there's a penalty for that sin. For the wages of sin, the death, Romans 6.23. Romans 3.23, for all have sinned and all have come short, the glory of God. One of my other favourite scriptures I like to quote, Ecclesiastes 7.20, there's not a just man upon the earth that does good and sinneth not. Okay, you just believe that Jesus died, was buried, and rose again. Now, a lot of times we'll go to Corinthians on this, but I like the fact we can just encapsulate that in John 3.16. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believed in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Let me emphasize that word again, whosoever believed in him. <laughs> Lastly, you have eternal life by faith in Jesus, not works. As we've seen today, there's, there's no work in your way to heaven. You can have opened all of the doors for every old lady. You could have given the most money in the tithe. You could have done so, so, so many good things. You could be like my cousin, who may be in charge of the Church of England someday, so we'll just name drop that now, um, and just tell people who are a good person to go to heaven. That man's going to split hell wide open. I'd like to think we've just set the line that I'm not, <laughs> that I'm not a respecter of persons. I was, don't worry, I was already dis disinvited from any family barbecue, OK? Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, but what I'm getting is if you think of this guy, and he's done everything right. But yet, in there, he's definitely had at least one foolish thought. So just on that note, there's no way you can work your way to heaven. And I just want to clarify that. And for anybody listening, I'm just going to close out with this, because this is the thing what we use at the door, in the store, or anywhere else that may be. Um, and I'm going to quote verbatim on the bottom. 
if everybody wants to pray with me. Dear Lord, I know that I'm a sinner and I deserve to go to hell, but I believe that you died for my sins and rose from the dead. Please save me and give me eternal life. I'm only trusting you to save me. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks for the day. And Pastor Fanning.